Okay, hi guys. Uh, today what we're looking at is scales of production. And so the first scale of production, we're going to start with small and then go to big, is what we call a one-off or a job production. So in the UK, they would call this job production. You know, this, these videos, which are really good actually, and they, they align a lot with uh, the IB curriculum, uh, but this is for the GCSE. Um, but uh, you can watch this later. But uh, when we're talking about job production here or one-off production, you're really making one thing. And individually crafted article or prototype and then you might use that to help scale up to a smart a larger scale production but these are things that are made for individuals so you know and a good example of this would be if I go and order a cake um, from Tamimi they're gonna make a one-off cake they're not gonna make that same cake over and over and over again they're gonna make the cake for me um, you might go to a tailor and have a suit made for yourself that fits you um, or a dress or something like that made for yourself that, that fits only you. So that would be an example of a one-off production. You might see this also with things like ships and boats. You know, they, um, Some ships and boats are, are one-off things. Like people get them produced and they're produced for that person. Um, houses, you might have a house that's built only for you. So th those are examples of, of one-off production. And there's some advantages and disadvantages of that. One advantage, advantage is it's customizable. So you can, because it's being made for you, you can say exactly how you want it. So for instance, if I'm having a suit made, I might say that I want to have uh, a silk lining, a red silk lining inside the suit, right? Like I can choose that. Um, if I'm buying a mass-produced suit that's at, uh, I don't know, Marks and Spencer's or something like that, I don't have that choice, right? I get what I get. I get what's on the rack, so it's not customizable. Um, it's just in time, so it's produced as needed um, and, and when it's ordered. So you're not making these things and having them um, uh, being held around. Generally, they're high quality, so we're looking at things that are quite high quality. Um, therefore, they're expensive, which is a disadvantage. They're unique to the customer. Usually they're produced by motivated workers. And this is a bit like what we used to call cottage industry. So before the Industrial Revolution, things were made in basically what we would call cottage industry. So you would order something and the person who makes it would take it from raw materials all the way through completion. So if you were to order a pair of shoes back in the day from a cobbler, so this would be a person, say, before mass-produced shoes, you would go in, they would measure your foot, and they would produce that shoe from, you know, the leather all the way through to the finished product, um, and they would be motivated, right? They, they would take pride in their work, and they're motivated. Um, so that, that's something that's important to understand about an advantage of one-off production. And then it's flexible. Now, the biggest disadvantage, it's very expensive. So one-off production is very expensive because, you know, for so many different reasons. Usually, you're going to need to have a highly skilled worker to, for somebody to take something from, from um, you know, raw materials all the way through to the end product. Uh, it takes a lot of skill, and therefore, it's expensive. Anything that takes a lot of time and highly skilled is expensive. So that's the biggest problem with one-off productions is they're expensive. The other problem is is that there might not be spare parts for it, right? If it's if it's made a single, like, you know, for instance, cars can be made this way, and, and, and sometimes you find that, like Ferrari or Lotus or, or Lamborghini will make specific cars for specific people. You know, the issue is, is that their machines, there's no, you know, there's no spare parts because that car is made for that person and if something breaks down on it you know component breaks down on it you've got to machine a brand new part for that so that can be a big issue and disadvantage of one-off production is the expense and that's really the biggest issue okay let's look at batch production so batch production what you're doing is you're making a limited volume production so a set number of items to be produced okay and there's advantages and disadvantages of that you know a good example of this would be say like a baker who makes a batch of cookies and they they taste the cookies and they say actually you know in the next batch of cookies I'm going to add a little bit of uh, a little more cinnamon to it because I want it to be a little more cinnamony so like you can change the batch between production runs and that's it that's a key um, important um, advantage of batch production but batch production you're looking at limited production it's much you know you're making more 
than the um, one-off, of course, because one-off is one, and a batch can be, you know, anywhere from a few to you know millions. And a batch could be millions; it just depends on what it is. But um, batch production is a limited production run, and then you can retool and reset in between batches. And that's actually one of the, the advantages is that it's a, it's flexible. So in between batches, you can actually change things and make them better. The risk is lower because you're not producing as many pieces, right? So not as many products uh, is being produced. So it's, it's less risky than mass production, which we'll get to next. Uh, there's less capital investment uh, compared to mass and, uh, or f uh, another word for that is flow production. And so smaller companies can afford that. Um, the issue might be uh, expense. This is probably, you know, again, one of the, the issues with something like batch or one-off is that they're more expensive than mass production. Um, you know, part of the reason is that it doesn't allow for something called economies of scale. If you buy more raw materials, you get them for cheaper. So that, that would be um, a way that, that mass production is cheaper. So batch production can be more expensive than mass production. You may not be able to produce as many pieces. You may not be able to meet demand uh, because you are, you know, if you have a product that all of a sudden is in huge demand, um, you maybe won't be able to keep up with that demand uh, because you, you're not mass producing them. Uh, retooling takes time. So like for instance, if you decide that you're going to be flexible between batches and change something, well, changing that per, that production is going to take time and so that can be expensive remember time is money so if you're you know retooling your your equipment to adjust for something that can be expensive and then you also might have products and components that might need to be stored uh, because you know in, in the retooling time you might be storing things so that uh, as we learned um, storing things can be expensive okay so those are some disadvantages of batch production. Which brings us to our last type of production that we're going to need to know. It's something called mass production or flow production is another word for it. And this is where you are producing huge numbers, so really large numbers of standardized products on production lines. And then you have, there are very high rates of production per worker. So you can produce a lot of things in a short period of time. And, you know, this is most of, well, not most, but many of our products are produced this way. And um, this is what allows us to produce things at a, at a lot uh, lower cost. And this is really what the Industrial Revolution was all about, was producing things in large quantities so that the masses could afford them. So the masses would be the, you know, the masses of people around the world. You know, uh, before the Industrial Revolution, if you wanted a shirt, you had to go to a tailor and the tailor would make the shirt for you. Uh, you would have to maybe, and even before that, like if you wanted clothes back in the Middle Ages, in the you know, one of the things you'd have to do is you'd have to, you know, <laughs> you have to farm some sheep or get some wool from somebody. You'd have to spin the wool into thread. You'd then have to take that thread and and weave it into cloth, and then you'd have to take that cloth and and sew it into a, a garment, a piece of clothing. So that was very time consuming. You needed a lot of different skills in a lot of different areas. So mass production allowed, allowed you to get rid of a lot of that. It allows you to have workers who just focus on one part of the process. And then it also means that what you're doing is you are maybe automating a lot of those processes. And that was, you know, again, the industrial revolution came back, came down to that, you know, rather than humans spinning the fibers that went into, say, uh, a wool uh, piece of cloth or wool yarn, you would have a machine do that. So the, that process of mechanization or automation um, really helped to make mass production something that, that brought down the cost a lot. And that's the main advantage of, of this is that it's cheaper. And mostly it's cheaper because of this idea of economies of scale. When you're mass producing things, you are buying large quantities of raw materials, and therefore you get them cheaper. Um, you can uh, have workers that are specialized in one task, and they don't need as much skill because they're not taking something from, from uh, a raw material state all the way through to completion. They are just doing one part of it. And because it's it's uh, they're doing one task, you may not need a lot of skill on that. So. You know, for instance, they may be just putting a bolt into a, a car at a certain place on the production line. 
Well, that doesn't take a lot of skill. You might get really good at it, but it doesn't take a ton of skill, and therefore you can pay your, your uh, employers less, and, and things are cheaper that way. You can have lots more product to meet demand, so that, that can make you a lot of money. And then replacement parts are, are readily available. Like if you have a car and the car breaks down and it's a mass-produced car, you can, get, you can get the part that you need and replace it. Whereas if it's a custom-built car, you've got to machine that and, and start from scratch again. So that can be quite expensive. The um, disadvantages is that, that it's not flexible. You know, the standard parts are not customizable. If you, you know, if you want a certain uh, customized part to a car, that's you, you just can't find that. They are standard. They're going to be the part is the part is the part. You're going to need a lot of capital investment to, to do mass production. So capital investment is buying things like machines, the huge machines that need to, to go into to making this stuff. So it takes a lot of money. Uh, in order for you to to do mass production, your workers are generally not that motivated, right? Like they are doing the same repetitive jobs over and over and over again, and therefore they get bored and they don't want to do it. So that can be um, a problem. And you definitely need a mass market, right? Like you're not going to fill like a little niche niche market niche or like small market segments. You're not gonna you're not gonna fill a small market segment with mass market. Uh, production or mass production because there's not going to be enough buyers. So you need something that is going to be uh, a big, big market, and that that requires research. So you'll have to know which you know how big that market is in order to think about mass production. All right, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.